Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning articles. First up, we're going to go over the market and exactly what's going on because the Federal Reserve just announced quantitative easing to infinity. And we're going to take a look at uh, what people are saying around the cryptocurrency and digital asset market, such as Binance CEO, CZ Binance, Mike Novogratz, and Willy Wu, which is actually the real article here. And finally, we're going to go over the scam of the day we'll do that in the second video but let's jump into today's videos or today's stories right now so first up the market doing fantastic let's be honest let's refresh it real quick see where we're at so bitcoin's around 6300 ethereum 131.15 and we're all up across the board so it's a green day which is pretty interesting because the federal reserve came out and pretty much not pretty much but just said hey we're going to do quantitative easing, and if you don't know what that is, it's also called quack economics. It's also called money printing, and they are going to essentially money print to infinity, and you've seen that term all over the place. So this is an interesting time because announcement was made. You could see both markets go up, cryptocurrency market and the S&P 500 and traditional market. So it was interesting to see what happened. So here we are with the S&P 500 itself and started off at... 2290 took a sharp dip in the very beginning and it fell down below that coveted 2000 points or excuse me almost fell before below at 2194 and then it just went up and up and up and uh, now we're kind of going looks like we might be moving sideways for the s p uh, gold is up over today up five percent silver's up seven percent so overall a good day for everybody but that doesn't make much sense because we have the federal reserve printing money into oblivion which is injecting liquidity into the market but it's not backed by anything it's just paper money so one of these markets is correct and one of these is going to be shown as a fraud at some point but it's just my opinion and then uh, take a look before we jump into today's articles i want you just to take a look at what is called the u.s debt clock now this is just for the united states globally debt is much higher but uh, it's amazing. You can take a look. The U.S. national debt right now is sitting around $23 uh, trillion. And every 30 seconds or so, it goes up by about a million. So that's $72,943 per citizen. And then per taxpayer, because not everybody pays taxes, is $190,000. Uh, 528 and that's per taxpayer to pay off the national debt and we'll just keep going up especially with quantitative easing so when we're going over these articles I want you just to have this burned into your brain and uh, to see where this leads you to your conclusions so first up Binance CEO CZ racks the Fed's quantitative easing infinity uh, this is the policy that they put out they said hey look we're going to print to infinity and that's that this is at 12 o'clock UTC on Monday, March 23rd, which is uh, exactly what day it is right now. It's 12.30 here in Texas. The Federal Reserve issued a press release to announce what several influences in the crypto space are referring to as quantitative easing infinity. The Federal Reserve announces extensive new measures to support the economy. There were two key parts of the press release. The Federal Open Market Committee will purchase Treasury Securities and agency mortgage-backed securities in the amounts needed to support smooth market functioning and effective transmission of money policy to broader financial conditions in the economy. Sounds very technical, but all they're doing is just buying up everything they can just to inject liquidity into the market. And if they don't have the money on hand, no big deal. Turn the machines on. Let's start printing cash. This was the reaction by Anthony Pompliano, a.k.a. Pomp. Everybody says that, a.k.a. Pomp. Sure, Pomp, co-founder and partner at Morgan Creek Digital. And he rightly says this, remember the $700 billion program the Fed announced to buy treasuries and mortgage-backed securities last Sunday? That was supposed to be the big solution. Well, they just announced they are increasing the $700 billion target to unlimited and will buy any type of bonds now. Anything. Anything you put in front of them, they'll buy it. No big deal. It's like a, it's like a blind dealer. Give it to me, I'll buy it. Although futures for the S&P 500 surged 55 points in pre-market trading, currently the S&P is down 38.59. Uh, yeah, it's actually going up and down, what, what not. And as far as, uh, as for Bitcoin, according to data from Crypto Compare, although it was trading below 6,000 before the Fed's announcement, within 65 minutes of the Fed, it had reached the intraday high of 65.13. Right now it's sitting at around $6,300. So 
they both went up. So to me, in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, is the traditional market is happy right now that this paper money is injected into the market because they're happy. They're like, great, we have no problems. The Fed will just save us yet again. And then the cryptocurrency market is like, that's not good economic policy. At some point you will fail. And that is why cryptocurrency has been created, especially Bitcoin. There's only 21 million. You cannot uh, duplicate that. You cannot go above that mark. That is it, set in stone forever. And that is it. So one of these markets is going to come out uh, hurting a lot. My question to you is which one do you think it is and why? Do you think it's traditional markets, S&P, Dow Jones? Do you think they are the ones that are going to be, uh, what is the term that Warren Buffett said? Uh, when the uh, tide comes in or the, when the tide goes out, you realize who's not wearing pants. That'll be interesting to see. Um, I've got my money in cryptocurrency. That's just my theory. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. In the last part of this article, CZ says, let's make an unlimited size bubble so that it never bursts. And then uh, this was this is pretty funny. Suzu, co-founder, CEI, and CEO of a Singapore-based crypto-focused hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital, believes that the Fed's actions will eventually lead to such inflation that the cost of a new phone will reach twenty thousand. He says, "I can't wait to buy a twenty thousand USD iPhone this decade." And look, um, if you've seen things in the uh, certain African countries, uh, also in Germany after the war there were people, they would take wheelbarrows of money to go buy bread because it was just inflation out of control and they did the same thing. They just printed to infinity because they're like, no, no, no big deal. We'll just print this and uh, people will just take this money. Well, the problem with that is, is that for every new uh, fiat currency dollar, in this case, that you put into it, it weakens the other dollar. So if you're one of those people who sit and uh, want to sit on your money and put it in savings, um, that's not a good plan because over time it just becomes deflationary. So you have to make that money work for you. You can do that, but uh, 10,000 today is not $10,000 tomorrow. That is a guarantee. Moving on. Next up, Mike Novogratz. This will be Bitcoin's year. So this is an interesting article because Mike Novogratz had pretty much been very negative uh, on a tweet that he sent out uh, a couple weeks ago where he said that essentially the markets and Bitcoin, it was a confidence game that has evaporated globally. So Michael Novogratz, former Goldman Sachs partner as well as founder, chairman and CEO of crypto-focused merchant bank Galaxy Digital, believes that 2020 will be Bitcoin's year. And uh, TA stuff here, fantastic, which is not the story. And really Mike Novogratz isn't the story here. The story is Willy Woo and sentiment. And this is where it gets interesting. Crypto startup Sentiment, which focuses on behavior analytic analytics, commented on this correlation on March 20th. Number two, over the course of Bitcoin's history, when correlation is high with the S&P 500, it typically is accompanied with major downturns in crypto. And that's true. When we started to see this correlation around the beginning of March, and then with March 12th come around, everything just kind of you know slid down to oblivion, and it was very tightly um, correlated with each other. In other words, the number one market, cap coin, performs best when it has very little movement dependent on traditional markets, and that's what's been happening over the last two days. We've seen traditional markets and stocks tank, and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market either go sideways or increase in value. And that's what I believe cryptocurrency is here for. It's to offset or it's to hedge against the bet against what is going on in the traditional markets because I do not trust that. I cannot get into that, um, that theory. I can't drink the Kool-Aid of traditional markets anymore. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And uh, I believe that cryptocurrency digital assets are a hedge and they are there to save us as a safe haven against what is happening in these traditional markets. Number three, any subsequent bounce backs over time are typically foreshadowed by a growing decoupling between Bitcoin and the S&P. We should see a clear sign of an impending uptrend when this correlation line is beginning to approach zero or lower. So the trend line is zero, no correlation. One is like 100% correlation. And it's been teetering around 58, 0.58 to 0.42, somewhere around there. And, and thankfully, I'm actually happy when uh, the crypto markets do the exact opposite, whether it goes down or up. I just like to see a non-correlation because it makes sense to me. 
And then Mike Novogratz uh, says, Bitcoin will continue to be volatile over the next few months, but the macro backdrop is why it was created. This will be and needs to be Bitcoin's year. Sure, whatever, Mike. Uh, but here's the real story. Willy Wu. Crypto analyst and trader Willy Wu also seems to think that once Bitcoin has found its bottom, uh, once we've seen capitulation, it will moon. He says, dump then moon. We are undergoing flight to safety right now. And I was like, that's an interesting comment. Let's see what that's all about. Bitcoin is looking for its bottom, but know that once the bottom is in, there are strong bullish pressures ahead. It's this economic environment in the years ahead that Bitcoin was built for. Uh, moving forward, he says, uh, seeking the decoupling. Here's where we are in the timeline compared to the 2008 banking crisis. And this is, to me, is fascinating. Decoupling of safe havens from equities showing hints it may have begun, i.e. when Bitcoin and gold go bullish. We'll have more confirmation in a week. So here we take a look at 2008. So we can see right here, uh, this is gold. This is the S&P 500. So as it started to fall, there was a, it, it was the same thing that just happened uh, in March 12th. Everything kind of fell together. S&P went down. Uh, gold went down. And this was in 2008, mind you, during the uh, housing market crisis. But then as it all kind of shook out and people went to cash and they go, hey, wait, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with cash. I don't know if the Fed's going to print to oblivion again like they did, actually. They actually increased the uh, the federal deficit by three and a half trillion, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, gold started to slowly increase as the S&P 500 decreased, definitely decoupling. And we can see it again. What's happening here? S&P 500, gold, uh, Bitcoin, or cryptocurrency markets, they all took a huge hit. Boom, 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 down they go. And now what's happening, as you see, is S&P 500. One little, it went down even farther. It went up a little bit today because of quantitative easing. I believe that'll reverse. And uh, cryptocurrency markets went up as well as gold. And I believe it's going to be a decoupling over the next days, weeks, and months. But only time will tell. I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time, ask my wife. So flight to safety 101, traders exit risk on leverage positions and sit in USD. Retail investors sell to USD for runway or hard times ahead. All assets crash against USD. Two, after peak fear, best assets for hedging the time ahead, the times ahead, rise in value, gold. Gold, in, gold 2008, gold and Bitcoin 2020, and I couldn't say it better. Perfect. That's what I believe as well. In an interview with Neil Kashkari, head of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, which aired last night on CBS, this was in 60 Minutes, during which Kash Kashkari said, there is an infinite amount of cash to the Federal Reserve. And I'm just going to have you listen to this guy and just you tell me if this is not craziness, uh, in <laughs> craziness squared. So let's take a listen. Let me go to the, Utes or the Twitter account. Listen to this. You don't need to. Your ATM is safe. Your banks are safe. There's enough cash in the financial system, and there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. Yeah. So let me know your thoughts. I think that's uh, that's legit. That'll be fine. No big deals. Or do you think this is a policy headed for disaster? And one last thing I want to talk about. Kashkari, uh, this isn't in the uh, Twitter feed, but this is in the uh, transcript. After being pressed in the comments by, I forgot the guy's name, the 60 Minutes reporter, Kashkari said, that's literally what Congress has told us to do, to print money and provide liquidity into the financial system. Just so you know, if you're not aware, the Federal Reserve is not owned by the government. The Federal Reserve is not federal. The Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. They're just a group of bankers. So when he's sitting here telling me that, well, this is what Congress told us supposed to do. That's, those aren't your bosses. They're asking you to do it and you did it. Why are you doing it? What is going on? Are we looking for a global reset? What's happening? I'd like to hear see what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comments section below. And that is it for today. A little bit quicker video, but uh, not much going on because right now, in my opinion, it's a wait and see approach. Let's see what happens with the traditional stock markets as it relates to cryptocurrency. I believe cryptocurrency is going to go up. 
Um, but we will see what happens with this coronavirus and how it affects uh, global trade, how it affects businesses that are closing down all around us, which is just travesty. And uh, if the, uh, the, the spread is contained with social isolation and all that great stuff. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys on the next one.